Over the years, we've watched our favorite heroes go through many different phases, usually symbolized through their costume changes. But some have gone through so many changes that their original costumes are almost unrecognizable now. So. Here are 10 of those cases. At number 10 is Doctor Strange. In his first ever appearance in Strange Tales number 110, you'd almost think that Doctor Strange was a totally different character. He appears as though he's some phony fortune teller at some town fair, to be completely honest. His color palette was yellow and blue, with this bizarre popped collar and streaks of silver in his hair. But over the years, he began to shift more into something resembling what we know today. He soon enough dons the red cape, but it's still missing the gold lining and the medallion on his collarbone seems to be independent of the garment of his cape. Although down the line we do come towards what we know today, it takes a while even seeing an instance where his head is entirely covered in a Deadpool like mask. He's held back on this list only because a lot of this seems to be a natural process of his costume changing, but he still deserves a spot on the list because of how many different variations there have been. Okay, at number 9 is Captain Marvel. Some might argue that Danvers in all of her different iterations as Miss Marvel, then Binary, Warbird, then finally Captain Marvel has been a victim of what a lot of female comic book characters have been subject to, and that this could be the reason for all the costume changes. In earlier iterations, many female superheroes had very revealing costumes that have become a bit more dignified as time goes on. So naturally those costume changes are necessary regardless of what the character is going through. But with the case of Captain Marvel, it could also be argued that these changes were due to her complex and twisting development as a character. A few of the more prominent changes are when she goes from the red, blue, and gold color palette to the red and white look as Mrs. Marvel. Not to mention, during this era, flames are an inherent part of the outfit emitting from her head, arms, and legs. But even in the modern era, we see a few changes happening in the last decade with the balaclava and mohawk coming into play for a brief period, then the recent change back to the grayscale color palette. It's a lot of changes and they're not always bad, but it seems like a few times the artists just weren't sure about what to settle on for. At number 8 is Dick Grayson's Robin and eventually Nightwing. The Robin mantle has had a lot of changes over the years and the fact that the character's name even changes from Robin to Nightwing speaks to how many iterations of the costume we've seen. Originally, Robin works the red, green, and yellow look with the impossibly tight green speedo and the weird green shoes. But as the character develops and gets a bit darker, he gets some pants, thank the lord, as well as shoulder pads and armored gauntlets. But eventually as the character takes on the Nightwing mantle, we see a blue and gold color palette come into play. And even that costume gets a few makeovers, going from the blue to a black and red look, back to a darker, more serious navy blue without the gold. He even appears briefly in a purple hood in a recent issue, but is now back to a black and blue look, similar to his classic outfit. At number 7 is Daredevil. This guy has had a ton of different costume changes over the years, starting with what has become the most unusual Daredevil look of them all, his original yellow and red costume from Daredevil number 1 in 1964. But since then, we've mostly seen him go full red, and although eventually he changes his look so much that he appears as an actual demon in the Hellspawn and Earth X storylines. He's appeared as Captain Universe, with his costume gaining an otherworldly effect with a spacey design and white pants which is also a first, and if we're to count Dark Devil, we also saw him with pointy shoulder pads as if he were a Mortal Kombat character. Mutant X also gave us a really different look with a half black, half red skin tight suit with more pronounced horns. The point is, Matt Murdock and the few others who may have taken on the mantle have gone through countless different costumes and Daredevil continues to be one of the superheroes known for changing it up quite often. At number 6 we have none other than Iron Man. I mean in his first appearance he is literally a guy in a big suit of armor which basically looks like it's more of a hindrance than anything and Tony only changes the color to gold when he starts fighting with the Avengers but there have been so many different iterations that I can't even name them all. Even between the three self-titled MCU movies, his armor changes a little bit, whether it be the color palette or a slight change in the shape of the armor. But aside from that, we have his Hulkbuster armor, which is an enormous bulky upgrade, then Iron Man Superior, which shows us a silver and blue design, which isn't even iron anymore by the way, it's made of an endosymbiotic substance, offering a whole different look and purpose. 
So whether he's changing his look to add weaponry like the war machine suit or to help breathe underwater like the hydro or a submarine suit, or whether he wanted to go full blue to blend in with his stealth suit, Tony Stark can't seem to make up his mind. And honestly, we can't get enough of it. At number five, we have Harley Quinn, who is right now a superhero, so I'm involving her in this list. Originally brought on as a sidekick to the Joker in a 1992 episode of Batman the Animated Series, Harley Quinn has become an icon in pop culture, and pretty quickly too. In her first appearance, she had the classic red and black checkered jumpsuit and the jester headdress. But her costume makes a small change between the animated show and the comics, with the checker design shifting slightly as well as her mask making a small adjustment. And then pretty quickly she shifts more in the comics, with her hair starting to show partly in one earlier iteration than entirely in her 2014 self-titled comic series. Of course, we can't forget about her look in the DCEU with Margot Robbie's portrayal shifting the character's look into a whole new realm. This naturally influences the 2016 comic series as part of the DC Universe Rebirth, when her hair once again appears entirely free of the headdress, but instead of black and red, it's dip dyed with the now iconic blue and pink being otherwise blonde. Now, I know that these changes are all natural progressions of the character's costume, but Harley Quinn is also known for changing her look temporarily for circumstantial cases as well, like her hospital uniform, her roller derby outfit, her punk rocker look, and the Task Force X outfit. And who can forget the Gotham Arkham Knights uniform, just to name a few. At number four, we have Hawkeye. This guy seems to always be wearing something different, and the only constant at this point seems to be his bow and arrow. When we were first introduced to Clint Barton in Tales of Suspense number 57 in 1964, he had a purple, blue, and yellow palette with a big fat H on his forehead. But soon after this appearance in 1972, he appears in Avengers number 98 with a blue tunic and a headband, looking more like Robin Hood than anything else. And do you remember when he took on the mantle of Golden Archer briefly and had a completely yellow outfit with a cap and feather? Well, that didn't last, obviously, and he was back to a purple hood and jumpsuit. In the 2000s, he shifts to a darker, more modern look, which I personally prefer, and in 2011, we see him don a dark blue uniform that covers his face entirely in the Ultimatum series. Then in Ultimate Hawkeye, he takes the mask off again and has the red and black look with the red goggles which kind of goes back to corny again, personally. Old Man Hawkeye changes it up again and comes forward with something like an earthy tone with cloaks. A lot of cloak work in the later years of Hawkeye. Anyway, I had to leave some out because there are so many cases, but let me know what your favorite suits are. And at number three, we have Wolverine. With a character who's pushing 200 years old, you'd expect him to change up his look a few times, but Logan has made so many aesthetic choices over the years that it's hard to keep count. Originally donning the classic yellow, blue, and black look, he doesn't stick with it for long. Soon we see his outfit go red and yellow in 1980, then full black later in the 80s. And then of course, the now classic 2000s look where the jumpsuit is scrapped entirely, at least in the movies. He then takes on the white undershirt and jeans during this time with the dog tag. But then the animated series X-Men Evolution shows him with an orange and black jumpsuit and then a total reversion to his original look in 2004's Astonishing X-Men. He then takes on the black look again in X-Force and then Back to the dog tag and white undershirt in X-Men Origins of 2009. It actually just seems like they cycled through his classic looks again starting 2004 up until the present, when we're back to seeing Wolverine mostly appearing in his casual clothes in the movies and something like the original yellow and blue in the comics, but who knows? I'm sure he'll switch it up again before we know it. At number two, we have Batman. Of course we do. His costumes have gone through so many different phases, it's almost impossible to keep track of them all. But strangely, his suit hasn't really changed that drastically since it first appeared in 1939. It's just all these different alternate outfits Bruce Wayne has taken on over the years for brief periods that have been so diverse and fun to see, and the reason why he 
sits at number two on the list. Some of my favorite looks he's taken on over the years have been the 1958 Zur N R look, the 1960 magnetic zebra suit from Detective Comics number 275. Briefly, it's a weird one, go check it out. The Dark Knight Returns armored suit, John Paul Valley's Nightfall costume starting in 1993, the Batman Beyond look in 1999, and even the stealth insider suit after Final Crisis. Then the much darker Flashpoint suit that Thomas Wayne takes on, which adds some red to the equipment belt, which is a really cool change. And they just go on. I could just keep going with them. Batman just won't settle on one look, but it does make sense for a hero that relies pretty heavily on his gear, that his costume would require a change up pretty often to keep him competent on the battlefield. Okay, finally, at number one, can you guess? Yes, you probably got it. It's the one and only Spider-Man. Do I need to list them? Spider-Man seems to have a suit for everything. And with Tony Stark on his side, he gets some really great upgrades with the spider armor, which is personally my favorite line of suits. But even in the MCU, Spider-Man's costumes seem to be a big part of any conversation, only coming after maybe the new casting choice and whether or not the fans are gonna be happy. And even within any given movie, we will often see more than one iteration of the costume within a two hour span of watch time. Whether it's the homemade suit or the symbiote costume or even some version of the spider armor, we're so used to seeing Spidey's costume change that it's become part of the experience of the character. And this interest in what this hero wears has been cultivated simply by all the different looks that Peter Parker has taken on over the years. The Future Foundation suit, anyone? That's gotta be one of my favorites. There are too many to list, so let's just maybe chat about it in the comments. Okay, that's the list today. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer you guys. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I've been your host, Ben Ball. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you next time.